with a brilliant quote from a paper you wrote in 2005 called Unbundling the Structure of Inertia, Resource versus Routine Rigidity. Beautiful yeah. title. And in the article, you work to unbundle the structure of inertia into two distinct categories, resource rigidity and routine rigidity. And you say, given this continuous change, a researcher's failure to recognize these distinctions can generate conflicting findings regarding re effects of threat perception on inertia. Using field data on the response of newspaper organizations to the rise of digital media, you show that a strong perception of threat helps overcome resource rigidity, but simultaneously amplifies routine rigidity. In the paper, you develop an interpretive model exploring mechanisms for overcoming these divergent behaviors. I love that talk and I love how you frame that. Maybe you'll unpack that a little for us. Thanks, Aidan, and, and I'm glad you like it because as I listen to my own words, I sound far too much like an academic. So uh, <laughs> let, let, me, let me come at that for some of your audience. Uh, when I was studying this phenomenon, it was very clear that there were conflicting literatures in the psychology literature. Some people said when we're under attack, we lock in and we, and we become inflexible. And other people said, no, 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 we have lots of data that shows when you're under attack, you actually become risk seeking. And, and I said, how can these, how can these two very s smart, thoughtful, scholarly groups have found such different things? And what, what we found is the ones who said you, you hunkered down and locked in, we're looking at kind of the structure of your behavior and the routines you put into place. The ones who said you became risk seeking, we're looking at whether you were willing to invest or not invest. And, and when Clay wrote The Innovator's Dilemma, he was mostly looking at this invest or not invest. Um, all of these great organizations would say, why would I ever invest in the disruption? It's unattractive, our customers don't want it, it underperforms on our traditional metrics, why would we invest in that? And, and, and so that was kind of resource rigidity. But we were seeing with the internet, newspaper companies were panicked. Everyone was telling you every day when you came into the office, you're, you're a dinosaur, your company's gonna die, you know, you know, your business is over. So they knew it was coming and they were in, willing to invest billions, literally. So the, the routine rigidity was overcome, or sorry, the, the resource rigidity was overcome. They spent money because they knew they were, they were in trouble, they were panicked, but they never changed their behaviors and the underlying routines of what they did. It was basically a printed newspaper published online. They didn't take advantage of any of the new forms of the media, the way the media could be shared involving community participation in the engagement because it violated the routines of traditional news organizations. And, and I remember I was in a, uh, in a doctoral seminar with Clay and we were reading these literatures and it hit me like a eureka moment. I literally stood up Aiden, in my chair and I said, okay, I may not be the smartest student in this doctoral program, but once I had that insight, I knew any idiot from that point on could could do something with that with that insight and and i realized okay root, routine rigidity is different than resource rigidity you can scare someone into acting but you can't get them to change their behaviors without a fundamental redesign of their organization 